You can have a lot of fun with this. Do you yeah. accept the humor of it? I do, and we think uh, Hollywood likes David versus Goliath stories, right? However, it could be Goliath versus the mosquito in real life. They could be that advanced, we could be mosquitoes. However, even Goliath is not going to go where there's a swamp of mosquitoes. So even though our technology may be primitive compared to Goliath, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one combat like in science fiction. They may avoid us. As a, as a noted physicist, what part what puzzles you the most? Well, what puzzles me the most is the so-called Fermi question. Why aren't they here? If they're so expansive and so galactic in their scope and billions of years more advanced. And I think the answer to me is pretty clear. We're not on their radar screen. Okay. We're Did simply you, too insignificant to them. Seth, is there any science fiction movie that came close to capturing what you think might be? Well, at the risk of uh, sounding sort of self-promoting here, obviously the movie Contact, which kind of portrayed the work of the, of the SETI Institute. So obviously I like that one because the science was pretty accurate. I mean, Carl Sagan wrote the, wrote the story. But uh, mind you, when Jodie Foster goes out into space to meet her dad on another, another solar system, well, that's maybe not so accurate. But yeah, that, that, that film was at least pretty good when it came to the science. Did you, uh, David, do you have a favorite science fiction film? Oh... <laughs> There, there, there are so many. I, 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 I worry that we're concentrating so hard on things that can be filmed. Um, I mean, I've had movies, and, and sure, they're entertaining, but it, it's in the science fiction novels where you actually get serious thinking about what aliens might be like. And then the next novel says, yes, but, and then the next says, yes, but. Mm. We need to bring this conversation out into the real world where people can maybe watch you chair um, three or four hours of, of scientists really getting at it. Because the historians have a lot to say, the biologists have a lot to say, and they have not been consulted in any of this I would, so I, far. I would volunteer immediately to do that. Dan, didn't you make a film about your stepmother being an alien? Well, yes, uh, but also made coneheads. You will be spared when my species overtakes your miserable planet. And we had fun with that. One note to David Brin, though. Uh, if, if photographic evidence isn't there, then Bruce McAbee, the ex-Navy commander and physicist in the Surface Warfare Development Agency, has been wasting his life. I, should, I think you should talk to, uh, to Bruce, David, and uh, he'll show you how he's broken down some of these photos, proves the ones that are hoaxes and the ones that seem to be yes. genuine photos of air, air, aircraft why, that are performing aerodynamically make... more than we... Why don't they, Dan, why don't they make, why don't these stories make the front page of the New York Times? But they do all the time. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the, there was a, a recent article in the New York Times, uh, in the, uh, the, in the, one of the subsections, uh, about, uh, abductees visiting at the, uh, Medical Institute of, of, of New York and discussing, uh, how their experiences. All, all I have to say, it's very entertaining to me. And let's keep it grounded in science, but please accept maybe that the reality is that maybe they are here coming to uh, treat us like the ants that the doctor talks about, and that really ultimately in the end, they will not want anything to do with us because we're basically pretty bad. I got it. All right, hold it. Does the United States have some kind of official policy with regard to aliens? That's next. By the way, Dr. Kaku's newest book is Physics of the Impossible, a scientific exploration of the world of phasers, force fields, teleportation, and, and time travel. Is there a government policy? about this? Well, we used to have the Blue Book. The government used to monitor these things, but then it shut it down and lost interest. And then, you know, the UK and other countries have looked at these things, but pretty much they're not taken seriously. But however, I personally believe that 95% of these sightings can be dismissed, but 5% of them really give you the willies. 5% of them cannot be explained easily using the known laws of physics. Now, that doesn't mean they're not natural. It just means it's difficult to explain. Seth, do you believe in the Area 51 or the New Mexico story of hidden bodies? Do you believe that? No, well, no, no, Larry, actually, I don't believe that aliens came 500 or 1,000 light years to enjoy some Tex-Mex cuisine in the southwest and then in the last 50 feet made a navigation error and crashed into the dirt. I don't think that that's the case. Uh, I might point out, however, the government does have at least one policy when it comes to extraterrestrial life. Yeah, there's a whole 
Office of Planetary Protection within NASA, and it's not to defend us against the aliens uh, as you would in the movies, but simply to make sure that if we bring rocks back from Mars or we send rockets to Mars, that we don't contaminate either planet by carrying the, biolo the biology alongside so that we don't, you know, mistake Martian life or earthly life, vice versa, or simply bring a pathogen back to Earth. Dan, why doesn't the government treat it seriously? Well, I think they the have. government... There's Dan, I think that, I'll, I'll, I'll let Dan first. Okay, sorry, David. Um, I, I think the government has. They've been interested for many years. There's all kinds of footage from the 50s of Air Force majors and generals in Ohio and Michigan going on TV and saying, we know you saw something, we're not sure what it was. Uh, Joint Army and Navy uh, Air Force publication number 146 specifically instructs pilots and naval and Army aviators, if you see one of these things, don't talk about it. It's a breach of national security. The Air Force has been very interested. The General Nathan Twinning memo says, we have to look into these things. They're aerodynamically advanced and there is something here. David. The Air Force has lost interests, lost interest, but they, they, they have been interested and I think are today still. David, is that true? Well, I want to speak up for humanity in two ways. First off, Michio is completely right that the Earth was prime real estate for two billion years before we came around. We see no signs, even in the geology of the rocks, if they had tossed a Coke bottle or or, uh, or emptied their latrine in our oceans, we would have seen the, the traces. So the Fermi paradox, the great silence, stretches on a big time, and it uh, is the big question okay. of why we're alone. Me, but I want to speak up for people in America. These retired, crotchety old engineers would have been speaking up a lot more if they had been in Area 51, if there had been a Roswell. Okay, Do let me you get know a, any engineers? Okay, okay, let me get a break. We'll try to close on that because we've just, as usual, skimmed the surface. We've about run out of time. Dan Aykroyd, sum it up. Your opinion is succinctly what? Uh, that they're here, that science should accept that they're here and look how they come from a billion years in the future or wherever the next dimension where they're coming from, they have abducted people. But I say, go, SETI, go, because maybe the nice ones will call. <laughs> what do you believe, Dr. Kaku? What I, do you know, no? Well, I believe, A, they're out there, but B, they're benevolent. If they're thousands to millions of years more advanced than us, they've had that amount of time to work out their problems. And the next time you're abducted, Please, swipe a paperweight. Swipe a pen. We have some <laughs> alien DNA, alien technology. Uh, That'll settle the question right there. Seth, what do you believe? Believe, believe. Well, I believe they will. <laughs> well, I believe that we ought to keep looking. Look, the big question is, is Earth a miracle or is life just a cosmic infection? I think the hmm. latter is probably true, but let's go look and prove it one way or the other. David, what do you Only believe? One? Now, I'll I close believe with Dan in a minute. David, what do you believe? <laughs> I believe that 15 years ago we knew of no planets outside our solar system. Now we know of 500. We're learning so much, so fast. It's not the time to be certain, and it's not the time to be yelling yoo-hoo into the universe when we're the children in the jungle. Let's keep learning. We're learning so fast, and let's keep talking. Stop being so certain. In the, this lifetime, Dan, will we ever learn the truth? Yes, I think a revelation is coming on a mass scale very soon. I don't know what form it's going to take, but there's a lot of witnesses out there. Get on the website, mufon.com. Let's keep it grounded in science, but please, hey, there's just so much photographic evidence. Ted Phillips, he gathers trace ele elements all around the world from these Thanks, uh, landings. So, you know, hey, thank you. Thank you, Larry. And this Always is the there. planet that created satisfaction, the g great Keith Richards song. That's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> we thank our paddle very much. As you may know, Oprah Winfrey...